Hey guys, Lance here. Uh, this video we're doing a Genesis 102, and this is for our own private blockchain. Um, I'm assuming you've maybe created miners in the past with Geth. I'm assuming you've already installed it at this point. Um, so that's why this is a 102. If you're not sure how to install it or do basic things, that'll be in 101. Um, the purpose of this video is because we had a request um, to do a, um, well, basically talk about essentially uh, all the things possible in uh, uh, Geth, uh, like chain ID and stuff like that. So I just wanted to go over that um, in this video here. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as you see, we already have chain data here, and that's from our previous uh, video that I was creating to show um, all the things possible um, that we could do here. And so the first thing is you will need um, a JSON file for your what's called Genesis block. So as you see here, I've already created this Genesis uh, file, but let's go over it real quick. <clears throat> so the question in the comments were, uh, where do you modify the chain ID? Well, that's right here in your Genesis block. Um, this is the starting of your block. This is where all basically data is going to start. Um, and each node uh, needs to join uh, the same network ID. Um, and zero to three are already reserved on Ethereum anyways, so you cannot use zero to three. Um, and the port numbers need to be different from the nodes that are installed on your computer if you're gonna have multiple nodes. Um, but uh, yeah, and that said, each node needs to initialize uh, a blockchain based on the same Genesis file. So if you're gonna have multiple, you're gonna need to have multiple. Um, that said, I've already created um, a data directory folder for this uh, for our minor one minor two um, that said and we've already created the genesis file which is in the main directory here called get uh, 102 as you see here that's our file path and then we have our minor one minor two uh, whether you've set that up or not unsure but we'll assume you have at this point at least one um, and so the thing is if we wanted to go ahead and start our first minor what we would need to do is get data directory right and minor one okay then init genesis <clears throat> and as you see we've successfully wrote our genesis um, here and you can see uh, the maximum peer count uh, there was no smart card socket found but, and we set a global gas cap as you can see here um, and everything otherwise looks like we've done it successfully um, so that's great news, right? So the thing is, uh, now that the blockchain has been successfully created, um, you can see that we have a guest folder which contains the database of our private blockchain, which is the chain data. And then we have a key store, um, which is where the wallet uh, used to store the accounts um, for this node will exist. And again, you could see that by um, minor one. These are the two folders that I'm speaking about. So now that we have the first miner done, we can go ahead and do the same for our second one, right? And remember, we need to use the same Genesis uh, file. So we'll go ahead and do that here, miner two. And that was successful as well. So we've now successfully created this on both. See, geth and key store. <clears throat> now what we need to do is create accounts. So the account for the first miner, what we're going to go ahead and do is get uh, data directory, which is data dir, um, miner one, right? Account and new. And here, your new account is locked with a password. Please give a password. And don't forget that password. You're going to need it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type a real small one. Okay. And as you see, <clears throat> excuse me, here is our key uh, that was generated um, and uh, the path of our key file, which is right there. And keep note of that uh, file path, right? So as we see, that was successful. And now we've created our first account on our first miner. Now, we can add multiple accounts to here, right? 
but I feel like that's good enough. Um, but if you wanted to, again, you could go ahead and run this again and create another one should you want to. And now we have a second one, right? The addresses are different. Um, now, the wallet for these accounts, where is it located? Well, that would be the key store, right? So if we do um, LL uh, minor one and then uh, key store, there is our location, right? And this is the wallet for these accounts, and that's where it's located. Now, if you wanted to see all the accounts on your node, your private blockchain here, um, all you simply need to do, here, to save some time, let's go ahead and do that, um, and then do account list. And then here you go. Here are all the accounts on our node, uh, right here. Account zero, and then uh, one. And you can see where the key is, the addresses themselves. Um, so you have that. Now, we uh, probably want to set this up for our other miner, right? Miner two. So let's go ahead and type that. Type in a password again. And we have now have our public address and the key file for that. So now if we, again, wanted to create another, we could. But just to make sure that we have at least that one account on our minor two, there it is, account zero. So that exists there. Um, and we've gone ahead and created our minor accounts, essentially, right? So again, you could create multiple should you want to. You don't need to. Um, but that's up to you. So now we need to go through the miner setup, right? So one thing that was asked in the questions about RPC and setting that up properly. Now, something to note, uh, if you remember using RPC is now being uh, depreciated. Uh, and uh, that's going to change um, into using HTTP. So anything where you saw RPC, that's now going to be um, different. Right. So, in fact, let's go through it and it would even tell you. So better to show you than to tell you. Right. So let's go ahead and set up uh, identity. Right. And we're going to go ahead and do minor one, for instance. Right. That does not look good. Does it? Uh, minor one. <clears throat> and then let's set this network ID. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want, whatever you have, rather. Um, where it makes sense for you. So I'll put in 43, for instance. Uh, then let's go ahead and list our data directory, right, for our miner. And that is going to be miner1, right? So we'll set that up as so. Put in quotes here. Miner1, right? And we'll go ahead and run no discover. Now, you might be asking why uh, no discover, right? Um, that is simply because uh, we're going to disable discovery of the mechanism because um, we're going to pair uh, our nodes later on. Um, and again, the network ID, as I mentioned, um, it's a, a value that we'll use to pair all of our nodes on the same network. Um, and again, you cannot use 0 to 3. That's already used by the live chains, like the main net that exists. Um, and as we already went over the GI directory, that's where our private blockchain um, stores the data, right? So, and then the identity, obviously, I mean, that's minor one, right? <laughs> um, so the next thing we need to do, right, is about mine, right? We want to set up mining, right? So we just put in tech fact mine. Um, and then, as I told you, RPC has changed, right? So... The RPC and RPC port is changing, and so uh, you need to keep aware of that. But let's just go through it. It should flag us and tell us. But if we do RPC port as so, and let's put in 80, uh, 42, maybe, um, like so, right? And then we also need to run port uh, 30303, right? Now you might see that often and go, uh, why, Lance? Well, um, this is the listening port number, right? On which the nodes will connect to each other um, and uh, do the new transactions in the blocks. So 
that is important and that must be available on your network. So don't mess that up, right? Um, okay, and so we'll need to do unlock, then zero, and uh, we'll need to do a password, right? Um, so password. Now, the path to the file containing the password uh, on the default account, right? So we'll just do password, do minor one, um, password cc as so, and then IP uh, C path like so. And here it may be different for you, right? Um, this could be wherever you have your Ethereum and everything set up. Um, this is going to have your geth IPC. So depending on where you have it, um, this is where you need to put the path to it, right? So it's going to be probably something like um, Ethereum uh, geth dot IPC, like so, right? Um, that's it. That's essentially all you really need to basically get up and going um, to get your first miner up, right? And if all fails, then you're going to be in trouble and you'll know what's wrong. Um, but in the future, to prevent having to rewrite this a billion times, the best thing is to create a, a, ba a bash file, uh, a script written in bash um, to put that in there. And that way you have a runnable script and you don't have to go and type this every time. Remember what you did, all the variables. Um, this way you just literally have it and you can just, you know, sh whatever you want to call it. You know, but um, yeah, so, you know, just in case, if you guys are on Linux and you're not aware of the path, um, one thing you could do is this, is uh, something like, uh, I believe in my case it's going to be home, Lance, I think Ethereum, right? And so right there, you can just go ahead and type uh, geth.ipc. Like so. Go ahead and put those in quotes, like so. And this is just so that we know where to store the IPC socket pipe. Um, so that said, if we go ahead and hit enter, hopefully all is well. Invalid command RPC. Huh. Now, why on earth is that? Let's take a look. What did we do wrong? Hmm? It's because we didn't put tac tac RPC. Now, everything you do in here requires. Tac tac or dash dash, whatever you want to call it. Otherwise, it doesn't understand, right? It'll think it's some kind of value or command of some sort. So, in this case, if we go ahead and run that, boom, Bob's your uncle. Account unlocked with HTTP access is forbidden, which I expected that, right? But um, error level DB not found. Um, and that's fine for right now. I'm not too worried. Um, so, that said, everything there uh, seemed to be going good uh, using. Um, Everything was fine, right? Essentially, started the uh, PTP networking. Uh, the IPC endpoint opened up. Uh, the HTTP server uh, started, right? And that's okay. Um, I expected that um, to be the outcome. And I'm not worried about it as of right now. Um, so, like I mentioned, what we could do for the future is go ahead and copy this as so, right? And what we need to do is also go ahead and create a new file, right? So let's go ahead and create a new file um, for our miner, that is. In fact, maybe we even want to go up one folder, actually. Well, mm, no, let's just go ahead and put it in here. That might be cleaner looking, right? So we'll just call it start miner. Well, let's just call it miner one. Sh. All right, let's paste that command in there, save it. Cool. So now what does that do exactly, right? So if we check minor one, we have our minor sh, right? So if we do this, minor one, my bad. It'll go ahead and run it for us, right? It's just a quick uh, way of going about doing it, running it for us. Um, 
just an easy thing to do. And also what you should probably do so that you can run it uh, a lot easier is go ahead and make it so it's runnable, right? That that kind of helps. Um, so let's do minor one. Right? Um, so now you can start the minor doing period slash um, whatever. Um, so the first thing you could do um, is geth attach, right? So if you do geth attach, uh, unable to do it, right? Because we have no connection. We have nothing running. So what you literally need to do is set up uh, geth, get it running, and then you can access that panel, right? So until you have that running, you're not going to be able to connect to it. But what I do want to go over really quickly is the conversation about having um, uh, you know, different aspects to running Geth, right? You need, you should rather, you don't need, you should set it up so that it runs fast, depending on how many you're going to have locally. You could set up a, a different cache uh, for it. Um, and of course, you can have it run on different ports and also have console enabled by putting, you know, console at the end um, so you can watch everything if you wanted. Um, that's one thing you can do. And that may be useful to you, right? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's my guess. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, probably in the beginning, it, it, it will be helpful to you. So let's actually go to our minor one, okay? Let's double click that baby. Um, let's take a look at what we've actually written here, okay? So let's run this full. So we put no discover. We put our fake, well, not fake, but the network ID we wanted. We told it what uh, the data directory is. Um, and that probably right there is going to be a problem, right? Because we're telling it to be in the directory that it was in, right? When it was running. And so that probably um, doesn't help. Right, so, oh, well, actually, no, we have it in the, oh, yeah, we have it in the MITRE 1 folder, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and move it from MITRE 1, right, MITRE, to this folder. And it should there, be there. So now, if we do this, what's going to happen? Still forbidden, but the data directory is there, right? And it knows where to go. So that's cool. I'm happy with that. You should be too. Um, and so now we see, you know, our minor one. And again, here's the chain data, light chain data, because previously um, I had a light one going. Um, and here's everything you might want to know about the nodes, uh, the key store, which, you know, we've spoken to about in the past. It's in a JSON format, which is great. If you have time to look at it, great. If not, who really cares, right? But let's go ahead and um, put up our minor. Oh boy, this new keyboard is really killing me. Um, let's see here. So here we have the RPC RPC port. And as I was saying before, um, if we want to enable like a WebSocket or something like that, um, or set up the HTTP server, you need to define that, right? So that's one thing you need to do. And we've already put in uh, mining, right? We wanted to mine. Um, but as I was saying, you know, if you want to disable the IPC RPC server, you can, you know, you just do IPC disable. Um, and if you want your sync mode for the blockchain to go fast, that's something that you might want to think about too, right? So if we go ahead and put in like dash dash uh, sync mode and put in uh, light, then um, the blockchain synchronization is going to go a lot faster, right? Now, if you want to enable metrics and reporting, which maybe you do in the beginning, uh, I know I do, just go ahead and hit metrics in there as well. Now, that, that's useful, um, and you can see everything that's going on. And like I was saying, if we put console at the end of this, it will run basically like an application, and we can see what's going on um, and how things are changing. And depending on how much memory is available on the machine, you can increase um, the cache amount uh, to make it go, you know, uh, faster, essentially, the speed of the synchronization. And you could do something like cache, uh, you could do 128 or whatever, but, uh, you know, let's do 2048, or, you know, oops, wrong button. Uh, 24. That ought to be fine. 
Uh, I mean, you, on my machine, I can definitely increase it how much I want. Um, um, let's think. What else do we... Oh, right. We were talking about WebSockets briefly, too. Right? To enable a WebSocket, you just put in tac tac ws right? Now, you do need to put in, you know, the ports and everything. And you also need to think about the RPC um, plugs, essentially, that you want to do. Or APIs, if you will. So here, we've only put the RPC port, right? Uh, another thing you're going to want to do is RPC API, right? And the R R RPC API is where you're now going to put in something like ETH, um, Web3, uh, Debug, uh, Net, uh, DB, Admin. I think that's good enough, um, really. I don't know if you need to do SSH or Debug or anything like that right now, per se. But I do definitely think it's good enough uh, for now. And as we were talking about a uh, WebSocket, right, you essentially want to do the same thing, right, what you want it to have available. So, um, so WS, right, for WebSocket, and then WS API, just like we did before. We're going to go ahead and put in ETH, uh, Web3, uh, Debug, Net, Database, Admin, right? Because that's what I essentially want to have uh, accessible. Um, and, and another thing you should keep in mind is the origin, right? And origin is important um, for what's going to, you know, because um, in cores, right? If it's going to be something that's not local, cores is going to be important for you as well. Um, so just in this case, let's just do um, origin since it's local. Just put local host, right? Simple, easy. We could go through it in another video, what we really want to do. But um, we set up our RPC port, 8042. You could set it to 8547, whatever you want, right? Um, now, if we go ahead and run this baby one more time, let's see what problems we're going to get. Ah, this is what we were looking for. So, as we see, WS API. What's wrong here? It says flag provided but not defined, right? Now, what does that mean exactly? I mean, if we go through here, let's see, right? Do we see? Oh, we see that. Hmm? You need to now put ws.api, right? ws.origins. And it has changed, right? It's not like what you probably saw before. So now let's go run it, okay? And there's a reason we're going through this. Forbidden. But what happened here? Unavailable modules in a HTTP API list. So stuff here was not able to run. For instance, database. Okay. So if we wanted to, you know, go ahead and get rid of database, we could do that, right, in both spots. Now, will that get us closer to running? Let's take a look. We're getting closer, right? We are getting closer, and we see the WebSocket was enabled, right? And we see uh, the HTTP server started. So that is great news, right? And everything else looks like it was running properly. It was using our uh, private blockchain. Uh, we were able to set the gas cap. And this is what we were talking about before. RPC is depreciated. Right? It will be removed in June. That's this month. So now we need to use HTTP, right? So that means where we have RPC, we need to change that to HTTP, right? So that means if I change this to just HTTP, is that going to work? Or do I need to put HTTP port? Well, let's go run it and find out, right? Ah, it doesn't know what it is. So probably we need to do that, right? More than likely. So let's go ahead and do that again for that. Save that, and let's see what happens. What do you know? Less problems? Did that fix our original issue? And it looks like it did, right? So here it says there's no such file or directory, and that's true. Uh, but everything else um, is looking really good, right? Uh, as we see here, everything loaded as we expected. Uh, we had a warning here, uh, unclean shutdown. Of course it did. It didn't even run properly, right? 
Um, it showed a new local node record. Um, it also showed that uh, PGP networking uh, started. Uh, the IPC endpoint was opened, right? Because get.ipc didn't exist before. We defined that, if you remember, uh, right here, right? Get.ipc didn't exist. We had to literally put that in there, right? And so then it created the file, and it will store it there, right? And the HTTP server started, as you see here. And the light client mode is an experimental feature. It doesn't really matter, right? I mean, we could change that from a bunch of other settings, right? Uh, so it doesn't really matter. So now this is uh, account unlock with HTTP access is forbidden, right? So as I said, you know, with this, this is something we can easily fix here, right? Um, and it's because we need to allow insecure. So right back here, this is usually a good spot to put it. Put allow. Allow would be helped if uh, we spelled it right. Um, insecure, right? Unlock. Like so, go ahead and save that, clear this out. Now if we go ahead and run this again, what's going to happen? Oh, failed to read the password file. Open minor uh, one password sec, no such file or directory. So as we see here, it can't read a, a password file, right? Well, that's okay. So what would we do, right? Well, we can go ahead and type code minor one, right? And then let's just do password.sec, right? And in here, you'll go ahead and type in your super secret password, whatever that's going to be. And I'm going to type mine real quick. And once you've saved it and you have it, now we need to go back into here, right? We need to define our password. So the way you do that is go ahead and type dash dash password, like you probably guessed at this point. And then since we're dealing with minor one, and that's where we stored it, minor one. Well, actually, we don't have to do anything, right? Because we already put that in the config. Um, so we should then be able to clear that out. Right? And then do uh, minor one sh, right? And there we go. It's running. Now, obviously, well, we would be running, but we have it in light mode, right? So how do we get rid of that, right? Um, if we weren't doing mining, fine, but um, what we'll go ahead and do is get rid of um, um, uh, light here just for now because we want to keep these as miners for right now. Okay, let's clear that out. Let's try one more time. And what do you know? We have it running here. So the good news is we've now figured out how to go create a miner, how to uh, create a password file for it, um, and how to troubleshoot get, which can be a pain in the butt, uh, especially since they've now updated the commands um, that or variables as well that are needed in order to get this going. So as of right now, this appears to be working as intended, right? So one thing you might say, well, how do we know? I'd say that's a great question. How do we know? Um, and I would say, that's another video, right? Or am I being uh, a jerk here? <laughs> um, so what we can go ahead and do uh, real quick um, is several things, right? We can uh, try with go into the JavaScript console, right? Um, and start mining if we wanted to. So if for some reason, uh, we could do something like geth attach, right? Now we're in the JavaScript console. Yay, right? So we see that it's running, it's working as desired. Uh, we see the modules, we see where the data directory is in that minor one. Um, and if we wanted to start mining, which we probably do, we do minor start, right? And it says null, right? Now we could do minor stop, that's another thing, right? Null. And right now, we're not too worried about it. We expected this, right? Um, and we could go ahead and kill our miner and see what's up and rerun it and have multiple. But in this case, there's nothing there, right? We didn't attach it as desired. We need to attach uh, via IPC or um, the URL, right? So one thing we could do, since this is incorrect, right? So 
We could do guest attach and then HTTP uh, 127.0.0.1. And what port did we use? 8042, right? 8042, what happens? Ah, so, and also, what happens if we do question mark? Nothing. What happens if we do this? Question mark. Nothing. And there's a reason. Because this doesn't have the variables like you think. What if we type help? Nothing. So, interesting, right? Um, you might say, well, what the hell? That sucks. Well, I'd say you're not wrong. Um, I wish they had something in there, but they don't. Now, another thing I want you to be aware of is starting and stopping the mining process, right? Now, if we went right now and typed in miner, what's going to happen? So if we do miner.start, ah, miner is not defined. Well, you can see that miner module is not specified in the list of modules that we were using, right? And this is why we have an error. So what does that mean? Uh, it means we need to then go back to our other terminal. Let's kill this, right? And we need to go ahead and add that as a module, right? Go ahead and put in mine, right? Like so, because um, ultimately, without it, uh, it's not going to work right. So let's go ahead and put miner and miner, right? So let's go ahead and save that. Gonna clear that out. Let's go try this again. What happens? Ah. Looks like all is well, right? Our web socket's going. Okay, everything's looking decent. So now let's go back here. Let's clear this out. Let's try and run this one more time. What happens when we attach to this? So now what happens if we do minor dot stop? Oh, no. Okay. And what if we do minor dot start? Oh, well, isn't that interesting? It's still not going. Well, I guess the true question is, why not? Do we see it? Well, it shows minor 1.0, right? Modules there. And we put it in the API for HTTP, right? It's there. We put it in uh, for the WebSocket, minor. That's there. And so there's no other real place that we would have put it, right? Uh, so all should be well, right? I mean, essentially, it should be running. Well, let's try something. Shall we? Let's go back to this. Okay, let's go ahead and kill this. What's wrong here? Well, let's try something here. What if we change this, right? What if we change this to mm, 30303? Will this matter? Does it even matter? See what things are running at. E forty two is the web server, right? Uh, e five forty six is the web socket. So what happens if we go ahead and do that here? Does this make a difference? Can we do anything? Oh, looks like we can't. Right? Why is that? Because it's incorrect. You say? Ah, see, it tells us it's incorrect. Right? So, hmm, what would we put there then? Right? Well, let's go back in our list here, see if we see anything interesting. Uh, 8042. Didn't we try that? I feel like we did, right? Well, shit. Let's try it again. 8042. Interesting. And it shows minor one. But you know what I am interested in? What if. We try to go here. Ah, it wants us to download a file of some sort, perhaps. Well, that's interesting. We didn't ask for that, right? We don't want that. Um, and what if, go back, oh, I guess I could do it from there. Well, let's go here real quick. Let's go back here and take a look at what's going on. Does it say we're doing any kind of mining? No, it doesn't look like it. Do we see any errors in here? No, not really. Don't see anything too crazy here, right? So, I mean, essentially everything is running as desired, right? Because we're not going to connect a 
30303, right? That would not make sense. That's for our nodes, right? And right here is our peer to peer networking, right? Uh, we know that's working, right? Through there. So we could attach uh, or have our other nodes connect through there. And we have 8042 working off of a local host, right? So, and here is our WebSocket. Well, 8546. Uh, did we try that? Does it matter? Um, but let's first do minor dot stop. Huh. I guess that's not going to be right, even though it shows minor 1.0, right? And let's go ahead. There's a reason I'm doing this, everyone. Oh, I guess you can't connect to that, right? 404 not found. So what if, you know, we just do get attach? Can I do minor dot stop here? It's still null. Why on earth would I keep getting minor dot stop and it's showing that it's null? Well, guys, the reason is not because it's not working properly. It's not because we don't have the module enabled. What is going on? Right? Do you remember? Um, and I, maybe you don't in this one. I think in the first video I talked about it. But um, remember, you can't mine without an account set up, right? You have to set the ether base. Um, so that's a problem. So what you could do is do geth attach, right? And you can do minor dot set ether base, right? Eth dot accounts, and let's just do the first account that we have as so. And what happens? Huh, true. So that worked, right? So what if we now do minor dot start? What happens? Null. Hmm. So what if we do minor dot get uh, hash rate? Anything? Oh, again, it does not exist or not available. Hmm. Okay. Well, now why would that be, guys? Can we imagine here? Huh? Can we imagine why we're having an issue? Well, yeah, we can imagine, right? Uh, the question is, oh, you know what I forgot to show you? Actually, let's do this. What if we do eth dot coinbase? Ah, that works, right? Um, hmm. What if we do minor dot get uh, hash rate? Still nothing. Ah, does not exist or it's not available, and we know why, right? Because there is no hash rate. Um, of course it's going to be null, right? So again, if we do minor, right dot set well, actually. Start null. Now, do we need to do minor dot uh, set ether base, right? Do we need to do this again? Dot accounts and for the first account. Is this gonna do anything? True, huh? So it's set, right? So it still says null. Well, what's going on over here? Anything new? Oh. Interesting. It appears that it's mining. Huh. Figure that out. Wouldn't you know it. So, what if we stop this? Anything going to happen? Is it going to continue? Yeah, it is. We've already told it to mine up here. Right? So, when it can, it will. Um, we don't need to control it there. Right? Um, not that that should matter. You should still be able to set it. As we know, our Coinbase has been set. Um, we've been able to um, successfully uh, create new blocks. We've seen that. Um, and we know it's working because we can see the mining happening, right? Um, you know, again, you can do ETH hash rate if you really wanted to to see what's going on. Uh, let's go back here. So if we do ETH dot Hash rate. Ah, I guess it's working. So let's think about this one, right? If we did minor dot start one, what would happen? Still null. Hmm. 
What if we just did minor start to function? So we know the capability is there, right? Um, and that's really all we care about right now. Um, now, what you could do is create a fresh data directory. Um, and the question is, did we actually shut it off? I don't recall uh, the server um, before. Um, but that says the hash rate is working, right? We can see, look at the hash rate. We know it's mining. It is working. So I guess one question would be, uh, is if we kill it, let's go ahead and exit out, right? Let's go back here. Let's kill it. If we get rid of mine in here, and we save it, does it matter? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so we know our account has been unlocked. It's not automatically mining, right? I mean, it doesn't look like it. Uh, here's our port and everything, right? Let's try to connect again. See what happens. So, one thing we want to check real quick um, is uh, our ETH hash rate. Zero, which means what? It's not mining, right? So if we do eth.coinbase, well, we have our address there. If we do miner um, dot start. Nothing happens. Miner start. Nothing happened, right? It's a function. Nothing's going on, right? But let's go back. Is it mining? It is. So that is something I have found. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but we're mining here, and we were able to start it, but for some reason it doesn't show it. It comes up null. Now, just so you know, the null is expected. I don't know why, but it is. I don't know the story behind it, but it works, right? We've set the ether base. It works. Uh, we've seen the um, uh, coin base. Uh, that exists, shows the address, right? And we're able to mine, right? And we set the ether base. So the fact that it's working, it's showing it, I cannot tell you um, why it does that. I, I don't have an answer. And I wish I did. And I know we thought we were going to maybe have an answer, but we don't. I don't have one. If you have one, that's great. But I wanted you to see that we don't all always have the answer, right? Like this, it says it's not working. Well, there's a reason. Um, and that will go into another thing, why this isn't working like that, right? Um, but again, to know that it's actually working, guys, all you have to do is ETH hash rate. And as long as this is not null or zero, you know it's going. And again, you could go over here and take a look. I mean, look, it's doing its thing, right? We know it's working. You can connect to it. You can attach nodes to it. Um, and again, I don't know why it says that it comes up with the error. Someone smarter than me is going to know that answer. Um, and the other thing you can do, um, just to see what's going on, you could do ETH.accounts. And we see we have two accounts here, right? Um, we know it's working. So I guess one thing you could ask yourself is, um, setting up, you know, Balances, right? So if we did something like um, uh, ETH accounts, right? So if we do, let's see, uh, user one, for instance, right? Um, if we do ETH accounts. Now this is just for fun here, guys. We set up that variable, right? So now if we type in user one, boom. So if that was our backup wallet or something like that, or different minor accounts, we could see that and easily access that. So, you know, if we wanted to get the balance, for instance, you know, we could do something like uh, eth.get uh, balance um, user one, right? And there you go. There's the balance of that. So th there's cool things you can do in here, right? Um, and again, I don't know why necessarily it shows that it comes up null. Um, I've seen it before, and I'm, I, I know there's a solution probably for it, and I'm just not thinking about it. And another thing, also, if you really have doubts if it's actually mining, the other thing you could do is eth. Um, uh, block number 
um, and you can see what block number it's at, right? And again, if we did minor dot stop, it still comes up null, right? We go over here, stopped. It's completely stopped. We go ahead and oop. we go ahead back here and do um, what was the last thing? Oh, block number. Right? If we do it again, nothing's happening, right? Because it literally stopped. But we go ahead and start it again. Give it a second. It's mining, guys. Um, so I don't have an answer. I'd be interested to see what you guys say if you figure that out, um, why that is. Um, the only thing I could think, you know, you know, I'm not really sure why, to be honest with you. Um, but I would love to hear if you guys figured it out, um, why it's doing that. And the only thing I could think of is maybe we need to create a new personal account, perhaps. Um, let's try. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Right now. New account. Let's just call it. Don't ever do this, guys. Password. Right. Oh, right. We didn't have personal set up. Shoot. Um, well, why not, guys? Why should we? Let's just try that real quick. Hell with it. Let's kill that. Let's go ahead and put personal up here. Save it. Let's try it again. Again, not mining, right? Whoa. We're connected, right? So, what did I mention? Uh, what's e.accounts? Right, we have the two. So, let's try this. Personal.new account. And let's just do password. All right, cool. It generated one, right? So, let's see something. E.block number 422. All right, now. Let's do minor dot start. Curious. Still no. Huh. All right. Well, that's clearly not what was going on. But as I said, um, we see it, right? We see that it's working. That's all we really care about at the end of the day. Um, sorry I took you guys through troubleshooting here. But that said, um, you've learned, right? We see how to get the hash rate. Oh. Why? And we're going to tell you more in the next video. So we've got through this, guys, right? We're about 48 minutes into this uh, long video. But I wanted you guys to see that not everybody has the answers all the time. We're all learning. Um, and this is one way to troubleshoot it on your own, right? You've got to figure it out. So we've now figured out how to set up our miner. Same process to set up another miner. Um, how to interact with our blockchain through the JavaScript console. Um, we can see the block numbers to see the ETH accounts we have, how to do like variables within the um, blockchain when you have this JavaScript uh, console up and running, how to start and stop it. Um, and even if you get a null value, how to go and see if you're actually mining. Now, again, if you don't want to do the start and stop business, you just put in dash dash mine, it'll do it on its own. You don't need to worry about it, right? Go ahead and save it. And of course we learned how to create a um, bash script to automatically load it, um, which is not a problem, right? So we, uh, we don't have to do this every single time. Um, and how to unlock, right? And we've created that password, right? If we remember, where did we put it? What uh, variables we set, which is right there, password, right? And we allowed the insecure unlock. And we've said where our get.ipc is, right? Our IPC path, um, the port, uh, the WebSocket origin being local host, uh, the APIs that we're offering for the WebSocket, the APIs for the uh, HTTP server, the port for the HTTP server, um, saying that we're not going to discover. In this case, we put mining back in so it automatically mines. We changed the cache. Um, we told it we want metrics. Uh, we defined the data directory where all of our files are going to be stored for the blockchain. We set a network ID. 
and we created an identity for this server, our miner one. So we've accomplished a lot, almost uh, an hour video, guys, uh, 50 minutes in. Um, and I think this is a good place to stop. Um, and if you have other things that you want to know or figure out, we can do this um, together. And I think, um, you know, this may be how future video goes in the future so that um, we know how to troubleshoot these things on our own, right? You know, you're not always going to get it right the first time. You know, sometimes you're going to forget things, right? Happens all the time for me um, as well. So don't let it get to you. Um, it happens. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.